This documentary is to inform the general public of how modern slavery exists, with an interview from Border Force Senior Officer Sarah McManus at Manchester Airport. Also in this documentary will be case studies of victims of modern slavery and news reports and helplines to signpost victims of modern slavery. Most people think that slavery only exists overseas. Modern slavery in the UK is thriving. The government estimates tens of thousands of people are in modern slavery in the UK today. Most people are trafficked into the UK from overseas, but there is also a significant number of British nationals in slavery. Most commonly, people are trafficked into forced labour in industries such as agriculture, construction, hospitality, car washes. Many women and girls are trafficked for sexual exploitation and domestic slavery. I was forced to have sex with him with lots of different men and often beaten. Others, particularly children, are forced into crime such as cannabis production, petty theft or begging. How does this happen? A person coming from a situation of poverty and lack of opportunity gets offered a job, apparently a good job in the UK, often loaning from the agent to pay for their journey. When the person arrives in Britain, the job and the conditions promised are completely different. Their passport is taken away and they're told to pay off their debt and violence or threats are common to both the victim as well as their family back home. Most people trafficked to the UK come from Nigeria, Vietnam, Albania, Romania, China and Sudan, although victims can come from all over the world. In 2016, an estimated 40.3 million people worldwide were in modern slavery. 24.9 million were in forced labour and 15.4 million were in forced marriage. One in four victims are children. So how do people of modern slavery from outside the UK get across our borders? I came along to Manchester Airport to interview Border Force Senior Officer Sarah McManus. Hello, my name's Sarah McManus. I'm an Operational Border Force Senior Officer based here at Manchester Airport. And as part of my role, I'm the Safeguarding Modern Slavery Lead for this port. How are Border Force tackling modern day slavery? Border Force is a professional law enforcement command within the Home Office and we're responsible for securing the UK border and controlling migration at maritime ports and airports across the UK and overseas. And Border Force has an obligation to protect all vulnerable passengers, which includes children, victims of modern slavery and vulnerable adults. And to achieve this aim, we, we uh, identify vulnerability of all types at the border, first responder to protect victims and uh, by safeguarding all vulnerable people. What makes a good border control officer? Professional curiosity, the ability to want to find out more about something that's in front of them, so not to take things at face value. Sarah explains the difference between human trafficking and modern slavery. Well, modern slavery encompasses all forms of human trafficking, slavery, servitude and forced or compulsory labour. What is the actual definition of human trafficking? Human trafficking is the acquisition of people by improper means such as force, fraud or deception with the aim to exploit them. Can you describe a typical victim of human trafficking? There isn't a typical victim of uh, human trafficking, but there are indicators to look for. And these can include being in possession of forged documentation, being distrustful of authorities, a weak account of why they've actually travelled to the UK, um, their travel docu documentation being held by another person and that person answering questions for them. Um, tattoos can also be an indicator. Some victims of trafficking are actually branded by the people that tra traffic them. Being poorly clothed, limited or, or no baggage, and clothing that's inappropriate for the purpose of their claim visit. And also just looking unkept or unwell, undernourished. I asked Sarah McManus, if you identify people of human trafficking, how can you protect them? Border Force works with lots of other organisations, but if we identify a victim at, at the border, we will interview them thoroughly, and then we'll offer them the national referral mechanism, and then we'll work with the authorities to protect them. If they don't wish to be 
to have the protection of the NRM, then we will actually signpost them to organisations in their home countries or if we do allow them into the UK for organisations that they can help them in the UK. What types of industries are involved in human trafficking? Well, it's not an exhausted list. Car washes, restaurants, brothels, the construction industry, nail bars, fishing, vegetable picking, the care homes, private residences, cleaning companies, employment agents, farms, factories. Like I say, it's not an exhaustive list. There are plenty of other industries that could potentially be involved as well. Well, Border Force works with a number of different organisations to tackle modern day slavery. This includes the National Crime Agency, the Gang Masters Licensing and Labour Abuse Authority, local police forces, local th authorities, Imagine Revenue and Customs, Department of Work and Pensions, and a whole range of non government organisations, including Unseen, the Salvation Army, Bernardo's, and Stop the Traffic. At Manchester, we also work closely with airline industries and Manchester Air Air Airport Group. Do victims of human trafficking self identify as a victim of crime and ask for immediate help? Rarely, but it should also be borne in mind that um, potential victims of trafficking arriving at the border may not know that they're a victim of trafficking, and it's only when Border Force intervenes that they can be made aware of the potential dangers that they're going to face. Border Force is in a new, unique situation in that we see everybody who crosses the border legitimately, and we have the chance to intervene. So a lot of what we do is preventative. So people trafficked in the UK will have crossed the border, and apart from those who enter clandestinely, will have been examined by a Border Force officer. The types of exploitation seen in the UK include sexual exploitation, labour exploitation, forced marriage, forced criminality and domestic servitude. We will hear more from Sarah McManus, Border Force Senior Officer, after listening to a case study of Ben, a modern slavery victim survivor. The victim's name and some of the details have been changed to protect their identity. My name is Ben. I was unemployed and living on the streets of a major UK city. When I was approached at a soup kitchen and offered work and accommodation by a couple who ran a block paving business. I was socially isolated, having broken up with my girlfriend and lost my job in a short space of time. I lacked any form of support network, seeing no other option, I agreed to go. I was taken to a site many miles away where upon arrival I was subject to intimidation and violence. I was forced to work paving driveways and I was paid little or often nothing for my labour. I was terrified of the consequences of trying to leave, so I submitted to this abuse for a long time. Now we're back with the interview with Sarah McManus, Border Force Senior Officer. I went on to ask Sarah, how do you identify a trafficking victim? There isn't really a set answer to this. It can be a variety of ways. So we have our intelligence teams and who can provide us information. Previous cases encountered could also be an indicator. Known addresses or, of, or employers and how the passenger presents themselves. Border Force is trained to look for all of these things and officers train in safeguarding and behavioural detection. So sometimes actions and body language convey more than words. What is the most dangerous myth about human trafficking? That human trafficking doesn't happen near me and it doesn't exist in this country. Unfortunately, a lot of what we see is happens in open, in open sight. Dogs are used at seaports and we do use dogs here when we were maybe looking for cash. So sometimes we can use dogs to identify proceeds of crime. I asked Sarah, at the border, are you looking for something suspicious? In what way would someone look suspicious? Border force officers are always looking for something suspicious and that all that looks unusual and are trained to ask questions to establish facts and obtain information. If someone is already in the country being used for modern day slavery, what systems are in place to help them? The modern day slavery helpline is there to, is, is there to help or uh, police forces can help also and there's various different organisations unseen and stop the traffic, uh, the two that come to mind. I asked Sarah, do you have the power of arrest? Yes, however, the, we limit that power to officers who have received the correct level of training. I went on to ask Sarah, how are people getting into the UK for modern day slavery? What methods do they use? Well, a lot that come through the border use their own documents. Some use forged documents and a lot can come in clandestinely in the back of lorries. Who is at risk of becoming a victim of human trafficking? Well, potentially anybody could become a victim of human trafficking. What happens to the trafficker when a victim is rescued? 
If the traffickers are identified, the Border Force and the organisation doesn't prosecute that, it would be the Crown Prosecution Service, but we would work with them and the police to, to uh, ensure that they are prosecuted. And the Modern Day Slavery Act is the legislation in which we would seek to prosecute under. What should the general public do if they suspect a potential human trafficking situation? The public can do. They can call the police. And if it's an immediate threat to life situation, I'd advise them to dial 999. But in non-emergencies, I would say call 101. There is the Modern Slavery Helpline that's open 24 hours a day. And calls can, to that can be made anonymously. Or they can report it online to the Modern Day Slavery Helpline. And of course, there's also Crime Stoppers, which again, people can report things anonymously. Here is a case study of Dorina, a modern slavery victim survivor. The name and voice has been changed to protect their identity. I'm 24 years old and from Romania. My mother left when I was a child and my father was an alcoholic. I couldn't get any work and I left school when I was 10 and earned money through lots of different jobs in the city. But getting there and back was difficult and there wasn't much transport. I did agricultural work in the summer months. Then I met a man who promised me a job and a house and a better life in the UK. When I arrived, things were different. I was forced to have sex with him with lots of different men and often beaten. I was taken to lots of different places and after two months I managed to escape and stopped a police officer in the street. He brought me to Unseen. Unseen is a UK-based organisation that's aim and task is working towards a world without slavery. The organisation supports survivors and gives them a safe place to recover from trauma and rebuild their lives. Tackling issues such as supply and demand are vital to eradicate slavery. They hope that one day with working in partnership with other organisations such as governments, business, communities and other organisations, they can stamp out slavery for good. But while there are victims of trafficking, they want to offer them safety, hope and choice they deserve. Victims will rarely seek or accept help because of the fear of reprisals against themselves and their families. Next up is a news report on modern slavery... Read by Harry Stafford. The Co-op plans to create up to 300 jobs for victims of modern slavery by 2020. Up to 20 companies are set to sign up for an employment programme devised by the Manchester-based Co-op. The companies will work with a network of charities to put survivors of modern slavery in touch with businesses that have jobs available. Co-op Chief Executive Steve Morell said modern slavery is a blight on society. It is clear, he said, that victims need to be supported while they rebuild their lives. Central to that is the dignity that paid, freely chosen employment provides. Also in the news today relating to modern slavery, a report has been issued from the Human Trafficking Foundation. The report is called Day 46, which follows the lives of survivors after they left their safe house. Research found that of 73 survivors a few months after exiting the shelter, 18 were completely unaccounted for. MP Jess Phillips, vice chair of the all-party parliamentary group on human trafficking and modern slavery, describes this report as a damning indictment of our failure to protect victims. If you or someone you know is a victim of modern slavery, please contact Unseen on www.unseenuk.org or call... 08000 121 700. You can also contact the Salvation Army on www.salvationarmy.org.uk or you can call 24 hours a day on 0300 303 8151. Alternatively, you can contact the Modern Slavery Helpline on 0800 121 700 or visit their website at www.modernslaveryhelpline.org. You can also call Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Alternatively, contact the police on 999 in an emergency, 101 in a non-emergency. If you recognise signs of modern slavery, report it. Modern. This documentary was produced, narrated and edited by Andrea Martinez. Voice over by Saskia and Wes. 
News read by Harry Stafford. Special thanks to Sarah McManus, Border Force Senior Officer. Music by The Wailing Souls, Modern Slavery.